Yeah, thank you so much uh, for having us. Um, I, I reiterate, I really agree with a lot that's been said here. Uh, and, and yes, we did, uh, well, my brother came up with the idea, I kind of followed him. Um, in terms of uh, transforming education, I, I view it as uh, meeting the needs of the people we are serving, and, and that's the learners. And one of their needs is being able to connect to a dignified livelihood, um, leveraging the education that they had or have. Um, and we need to leverage the resources that we have at our disposal, technology, capital, partnerships, and essentially the feedback from youth as quickly as possible to be able to, to serve them uh, appropriately. In terms of the uh, private sector's engagement, I see a few ways. Uh, firstly, this is an incredibly complex and challenging problem. We need all the resources we can have access to. We need our most committed minds, we need capital, um, we need technology, and the private sector can provide that. Uh, we also need the private sector's involvement in the design process. There are a billion young people that are gonna enter the workforce over the next decade. 60% of young people do not have the skills needed to thrive in the workplace. We cannot afford to not have the perspective of the private sector in the design process of skills and education. And finally, the private sector can contribute to, uh, to the actual uh, learning materials that are, that are needed um, to be able to uh, to be able to make this a success. 70% of companies, as was mentioned by Tina, uh, have unmet skill needs, which represents trillions of do dollars of unrealized revenue if we cannot meet them over the next years. So it is not just the right thing to do for them to be engaged, it's also a financial imperative, echoing what you were saying, Tara, as well. 